what explosions can do. And the effectiveness and timing of those explosions hinge on a little gadget called a fuse. Fuses are needed to set off mines and booby traps. Mortar shells. Rockets. Bombs. And artillery shells. The damaging effect of bombs, rockets, and shells is caused by the bursting charge. The bursting charge, plus a series of smaller charges, forms what is known as the explosive train. At the instant of the explosion, here's what happens. A small charge of a very sensitive explosive in the fuse is subjected to heat or shock. It explodes and sets off a series of other charges which build up the first small explosion until it is powerful enough to set off the bursting charge. Of course, all this happens in a flash, but we'll slow down all explosions so you can see what happens. The number of charges leading to the bursting charge may vary, but generally there will be a very sensitive primer a less sensitive detonator, and a considerably less sensitive booster. Some or all of these intermediate charges between the primer and the bursting charge may be enclosed in the fuse. To simplify matters, let's concentrate on the primer and detonator, the more sensitive charges which actually start the explosive train. The primer is so sensitive that it will explode when struck by a pin, called the firing pin. It's easy to get a simple fuse like this to function. For example, let's use it in an improvised anti-personnel mine. When the mine is stepped on, the firing pin strikes the primer and the mine explodes the enemy himself sets off the fuse at the right moment. But what about the fuses on rockets, bombs, and artillery shells? How can we make them explode at the right moment? They must be launched at the enemy. Impact super quick fuses are used when we want the explosion to occur just as the shell hits. Impact delay fuses are used in other cases, where the damage will be greater if the explosion is delayed until some time after impact. Time fuses, or aerial burst fuses, are used when the most effective explosion will be one that occurs above the target or near the target. The basic functioning of these fuses is the same as we've seen before. A firing pin initiates a primer to set off an explosive train. In all cases, a fuse must be safe to handle and also bore safe so that it will not explode the projectile in the weapon. A fuse meeting these safety requirements is said to be unarmed. When armed, the fuse is ready to set off the explosive train. To arm a fuse and have the explosion take place at the right moment, we have to take advantage of the forces that act upon it while in the weapon, in flight, and upon reaching the target. Let's look at the basic components of the simplest type, impact super quick fuses. Here are the firing pin, the primer, and the detonator. Now, to see how this fuse would function on impact. When it hits the target, the firing pin struck the primer, setting off the round. But this fuse would not be safe. In flight, air pressure could push the firing pin into the primer. This could be prevented by using a cylinder or cup under the head of the firing pin. The cup is made of a material strong enough so that it would be crushed normally only by the force of impact. 
If a more sensitive fuse were desired, the cup could be replaced by a spring. But this fuse is still not safe. It might go off if it were bumped, and if it were fired from a weapon, the firing pin would be driven in primer while the projectile was in the bore. Here's what happened. The firing pin strikes the primer because of a force known as setback. Everyone has experienced setback when a vehicle starts. For example, watch the man in the rear of the truck. As the truck starts to move, the natural tendency of his body is to remain stationary. The same force of setback can be used to lock a holding device called a restraining pin. This pin locks the firing pin in an unarmed position. At the moment of firing, the restraining pin moves back against the rear part of its channel and friction prevents the pin from moving outward until the projectile has left the muzzle. In an actual fuse, a spring holds the restraining pin in position during handling. All projectiles shot on rifled barrels rotate in flight. This rotation makes it possible to use centrifugal force for arming the fuse. The same force causes this sliding plug to move away from the center of rotation. Now let's return to the shell and see how centrifugal force releases the restraining pin. If we cup the fuse here, we can look inside and see the action. As soon as the friction of setback has been overcome, centrifugal force causes the restraining pin to move outward. Now the firing pin is unlocked. When the fuse strikes the target, the firing pin is free to strike the primer and explode the round. Centrifugal force can also be used to operate a device to make the fuse detonator safe. One such device is an explosive train interrupter. Centrifugal force moves the interrupter outward, thus providing a clear path for the explosive train. That finishes our discussion on artillery fuses classified as impact super quick. Impact delay fuses bring up a new problem. Here we use the force of impact to start the fuse, but lay the main explosion until some time after impact. To do this, all that is needed is a pellet of compressed black powder in the flash channel between the primer and the detonator. Since this pellet takes a little time to burn through, it provides the desired delay before the remaining charges are set off. A delay element such as this can be incorporated in practically any type of fuse, and by varying the length, it is easy to control the duration of the delay. A simple device, but very effective. Now, there's still another important thing we need to know regarding impact fuses. So far, the fuses have been in the front end of the projectiles. When in this position, they are called point fuses. But there are occasions when a fuse must be placed in the rear. For example, this armor-piercing projectile with its tough nose of solid steel and behind that its bursting charge. On a round like this, we'll have to put the fuse into the base of the projectile. This is called a bay fuse. Fuses of this type are functioned on impact by the force of inertia. Here's an everyday example of the same force in action. Because of the tendency of a moving body to stay in motion, our victim is thrown forward when the truck comes to a sudden stop. Or to be more correct, inertia causes his body to continue in motion after the truck comes to a halt. The same thing happens to the firing pin of a base fuse. For instance, take the non-delay type of base fuse which takes a fraction of a second longer than an impact super quick fuse. When the shell is suddenly stopped by impact, the pin is thrown forward into the primer, starting the explosive train. The safety devices used on a base fuse are practically the same as those found on point fuses. A device such as a spring or this shear wire restrains the firing pin until impact. 
Here's what happens when the shell is stopped suddenly. The shear wire is cut when the firing pin is driven forward. And here are some arming devices. If a fuse rotates, we can arm it by centrifugal force using a rotor type firing pin. This type of firing pin is pivoted in such a way that when it is in the unarmed position, point cannot reach the primer. The firing pin is held in the unarmed position by a locking pin. Let's take a look at a model of a rotor type firing pin to see how centrifugal force moves it to the armed position. When the pin is revolved, the heavy portion moves outward, away from the axis of rotation, until finally the pin is in the armed position. Let's go back to our fuse and follow the action after the shell is fired. Once setback has ceased, rotation of the fuse sends the pin outward. This releases the rotor. Then centrifugal force throws the heavy side of the firing pin outward, lining up the point of the pin with the explosive train. This same principle can be applied to hold part of the explosive train out of alignment as a further safety device. The same type of locking pin is used. Centrifugal force releases the locking pin and acts on the heavy side of the rotor, moving it outward and lining up the explosive train. At the same time, centrifugal force releases the other rotor, line up the firing pin. With both rotors in the armed position, the fuse is ready to function. Before we finish with impact fuses, here's one more type, the selective fuse used in artillery. Such a fuse makes it possible to select the kind of action wanted, either impact super quick or impact delay, merely by turning a selector sleeve on the fuse. Let's see what the inside looks like. Here are the interrupter and the selector sleeve. With the selector set on delay, the interrupter can't move into the sleeve. But with the selector set on super quick, the interrupter can move outward. And here's the delay assembly. It consists of the following parts. A firing pin, primer, delay pellet, detonator, and a centrifugal locking pin. After the locking pin has been moved outward by centrifugal force, inertia at the instant of impact can move the entire assembly forward so that the primer can strike the firing pin. When the fuse is set for delay, centrifugal force can't move the interrupter outward. Thus, the explosion of the super quick primer and detonator can't be relayed to the booster because the interrupter stops it. And that's where the delay assembly comes in. On impact, inertia sends the primer forward into the delay firing pin. The flash starts the black powder pellet burning. And when it burns through, it sets off the intermediate charges, eventually exploding the bursting charge. 